morning, Moran Valley Church. I'm so glad that Pastor Pat has been uh, leading us through the book of Jonah. And uh, a couple of things have really impacted me uh, with this book. On the one hand, in Jonah 1 verse 2, God is speaking to Jonah, commanding him to go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it because their wickedness has come up before God. I'm thinking that's a whole lot of wickedness to stir up the righteous and holy judgment of God. So their wickedness stirred me on one hand. And on the other hand, in Jonah 3, 5, it says, for the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast. They put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. That means all classes of people were humbled. They believed God. And there's a lot that goes on in between that you can reread it for yourself. Their wickedness. And then they turned to God. That's impactful to me. How did that happen? So you see, all of Jonah, just like any other book of the Bible, has God as the central point. He's the hero of all of Scripture. Even when people are not turning towards God, he's still the main point. The wickedness of Nineveh, they were turning away from God and his holiness. Jonah's flight from the presence of the Lord. He was fleeing from the presence of God. And then even on the ship with the sailors, initially because of the great storm and their boat was about to break up, they were crying out to their individual gods, God with a little g. And then in Jonah 1, 4, they were crying out to the Lord. So God is always the main point where the people are turning away from him, where the people are turning to him, he's God. And Jonah expresses God's character his compassion, his great compassion, his relentless pursuit, and his overflowing mercy has just been settling in my own soul. His compassion and pursuit of the people of Nineveh, it was relentless. His second chances for uh, Jonah, was his overflowing mercy. And then salvation belongs only to God because of his mercy, the Ninevites believed God. And whenever there's a turning to God, there's a response. So the Ninevites were humble in their heart and they expressed their humility outward by putting on sackcloth and ashes. And the, here's the, the application in my own life. God's compassion, his relentless pursuit of me, and his overflowing mercy has been uh, transforming in my life as a believer. God's compassion along the way even to this very day has been expressed when I've been fleeing from the Lord, when I've been turning away from him. And the core of what I'm thinking of now is all the time, all the years, all the ways that I've run to people for their affirming words and I have not run to the Lord. So this is the activity of fleeing from the presence of God in my own life because people were more important to me than God. Their words, their affirmations, 
Their encouragement in my own heart was more important and has been more important than the words, than the encouragement, than the promises of God in my heart. One of the passages that God has used over and over and over again is uh, John 5, 44. It says, uh, Ava, how can you believe when you receive glory from one another? He's talking in that context to the Jewish people. And do not seek the glory is, uh, that is from the one and only God. <laughs> That's been a convicting verse, but also it's been a transforming verse in my life. So these are the words that God has proclaimed to me along the way. These are the words that God is proclaiming to me. Ava, why do you see glory from people, honor from people, lifting up and encouragement from people and not? from me, he says. So he has deepened me through those words. Those words have brought tears and, and brokenness and a heartbeat for God. Because even though people pleasing sounds good, it sounds sweet, it sounds not so bad. It's a sinful tendency in my life to turn my gaze another way and God will not have it because he loves me because he loves you so much so these are the words that even though this has been my weakness God has used the weakness to teach me how to run to him so how about you what are the words that God is proclaiming to you through his word the scriptures or even through another human being, even through a child? What are the words that, that God has been proclaiming to you even in these most difficult days that has caused you to stop and hear and turn your gaze and respond to the Lord with humility? What has, have been those words for you? So even though we have a weakness or a sin tendency, God can use that same sin to stir us up, to not flee from him, but run to him. Ah, uh, let me pray for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your uh, great compassion not only in the ancient days, but right here and right now. Thank you for your compassion on me. Thank you for your pursuit of, of my brothers and sisters and of me. Thank you for your overflowing mercy that we see in the book of Jonah and that we can make that application right here, right now, right in the difficult times in our life as well. Oh Lord, thank you for the words that you are speaking to us <laughs> through, your, through the scriptures right now in these difficult times to cause us to stop and listen and long to pursue you more than any other person, place, or thing. We do love you, Lord. Keep us growing. Keep us deepening. Keep us pursuing you by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.